so good to me. Every day he's blessing me. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Take the time to glorify the Lord today. Blessing me over and over, blessing me. Guess what? He opened my eyes that I might see. He's blessing me. He keeps blessing me over and over, blessing me. Why don't you take the time? Take the time to glorify the Lord. Today, one more time, every day, every day is a day of thanksgiving. God's been so good to me. Every day he's blessing me. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Take the time to glorify the Lord today. He keeps blessing me over and over, blessing me. Is that your testimony? Blessing me over and over, blessing me. One more time, he keeps on blessing me. Over and over, blessing me. Let me tell you what he did. He opened my eyes that I might see. He's blessing me. He keeps blessing me. Over and over, blessing me. Take the time. Take the time to glorify the Lord. Take the time to glorify the Lord. Take the time to glorify the Lord today. God bless you and welcome to the Canaan online worship experience where we're exalting God, edifying the body of Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God with the spirit of excellence. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're delighted that you decided to join in, to tune in on today. And we pray that you're blessed in the time that you'll share with us on today. We encourage you to invite family and friends. Hit the like or the love button. Leave a comment. Let us know that we're being a blessing in your life on today. Shall we bow in a quick word of prayer? Most gracious and eternal wise God, we thank you now for another day to live and another day to serve, a day which we have never seen and will never see again. God, we thank you for your bountiful blessings. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And now, God, we ask that you would have your way in this worship experience on today. Do what you want done. Say what you want said. But more importantly, God, we pray that those that have tuned in and are uh, gathered here today, that they would be blessed by the, by the word. And we pray, oh God, that something would be said and done that would serve to strengthen and encourage them. Now, God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, because you are my strength and you are my redeemer. And every child of God said amen, amen, and amen. There is a word from the Lord on today. I trust that you have your Bibles with you electronically or leather bound. I want to call your attention to a very familiar passage of Scripture, uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. There you will find these words are still recorded in the English Standard Version. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? 
who shall bring any charge against God's elect. It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present or things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord is already blessed, but we ask a special blessing upon the readers, hearers, and doers of God's word. For just a few moments on today, brothers and sisters, I want to talk from this subject, if God is for us. If God is for us if God is for us. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this eighth chapter of Romans is one of the most profound passages of scripture recorded within the Bible. It has provided assurance and comfort to the hearts, minds, as well as the spirit of believers down through the years. In this one chapter alone, you can discover that the child or the children of God has been delivered from condemnation based on our relationship with Jesus the Christ. We're given direction for overcoming our flesh. We rejoice in our placement and future inheritance by being adopted into the family of God, realizing that God works all things together for good to those who love him and are considered those who are called to the Lord in salvation. Within these closing verses of this powerful passage of scripture, brothers and sisters, Paul speaks of assurance and security of the believer in Christ. And once we are delivered of condemnation and placed within the family of God, we are secure for all eternity we will discover that nothing can separate us from the love of God or remove us from his care. Allow us to look at this passage and to take a few moments to look at what it means if God is for us. It means, brothers and sisters, first of all, that if God is for us, it means that our place with God is unquestionable. Our place with God is unquestionable. Paul says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He didn't spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also uh, with him graciously give us all things? And that little bitty word, if, suggests in the English language questioning or doubt, but in the Greek in this text, it declares a condition that is true, that is right, 
a condition that can be counted on. In other words, as believers, we don't have to guess, we don't have to speculate, we don't have to wonder because we know that God is for us and because God is for us. That means that he's on our side no matter what and no matter who is against us. Our place in God is unquestionable based on the overwhelming evidence at the cross of Calvary. God the Father literally refused to rescue his only begotten son. Let me back up. I don't want you to miss that. Think about this. God the Father literally refused to rescue Jesus off of the cross, something that none of us would ever consider or contemplate doing. He did it to save us and to secure our place in him. And the cross, brothers and sisters, is the epitome of love and sacrifice. And if God met our greatest need, our problem of sin and with sin and in sin by allowing his son Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary, then surely and certainly he'll meet any other needs we may have in our lives. I'm not making it up because he's meeting needs in the middle of a pandemic because folks are still being promoted. Folk are still being prosperous. Folk are still experiencing his presence, his protection, and his provision. You, you still got family. You still got finances, you've still got fitness, you've still got friends in the midst of everything that's going on. Why? I'll tell you why. Because your place in God is unquestionable. The God we serve is for us and no, no enemy, no, no enemy emotionally, no enemy financially, physically, or spiritually can defeat us. If God is for us, our place in God is unquestionable. But if God is for us, not only is our place in him unquestionable, but then secondly, uh, if God is for us, the enemy's charges against us are unjustified. The enemy's charges against us are unjustified. Listen at what Paul says, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Our enemy, our adversary is Satan, the diabolical accuser of the children of God who drags us before the cosmic court of God to accuse us of colossal failure. He attempts to discredit us all while trying to disgrace God, but thanks be unto God, the enemy can't, uh, he cannot make the accusations or the charges stick to us. Now, 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 understand, brothers and sisters, don't, 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 don't get beside yourself. Don't, 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 don't think so highly of yourself than you ought to because, 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 because it goes without saying that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us were guilty of sin. All of us were worthy of condemnation. None of us had no hope within ourselves and no way to obtain righteous, the righteousness that God demanded. But when we decided to follow Jesus, 
when we decided to put our trust in him for our salvation, our debt was paid and the charges were dropped because Jesus interceded on our behalf. What do you mean, Pastor Witcher? Let me show you what I mean. You understand that defendants that are charged with accusations or violations in court, whether true or false, they need a good lawyer with good credentials and great references. And when we receive our death sentence, our advocate, Jesus the Christ, died in our place and when Satan came to accuse us again in that great cosmic court the jury assumed oh man that the advocate our advocate was dead because they didn't know what happened three days later but Jesus showed up in court for us here's what I want you to see when he showed up for us. Crystal, he didn't enter the courtroom like most lawyers. He, he didn't come through uh, what we would consider the back door. No, no. Our lawyer came into the courtroom. He entered the courtroom from the judge's chambers because he's at the right hand of God making intercession. I wish I had somebody in here that felt like I felt. I'm so glad that trouble don't last always and Jesus is always standing up for me. But don't miss this. Don't miss this because it's God that justifies, which is a legal term that means to acquit, to absolve. So our enemy's charges are unjustified because we're friends with the judge. I wish I had some help right there. We're friends with the judge who quickly acquits us and throws out our court case and as long as Jesus is our advocate, any charges brought against us are unjustified and won't stand in God's courtroom because God is for us. Why don't you just type that in? Why don't you high five somebody in your house and your on your job, wherever you are? Tell them God is for us. And if God is for us, our place in God is unquestionable. The enemy's charges in the courtroom against us are unjustified. But then, thirdly, if God is for us, Travis. Jesus' love for us is unbreakable. Jesus' love for us is unbreakable. I'm not making it up. I'm still in Bible country. Who shall separate us, this is what Paul says, from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake. We are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Brothers and sisters, the enemy knows that as long as we have Jesus as our advocate, he has no chance against us. Therefore, he, he, he tries to accuse us and when that doesn't work and our case is thrown out based on the blood, he tries to separate us from the love of Christ. First, he tried to separate us with sin, but it didn't work because Christ died for sin. That's what, that's what Paul said. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died. 
died for the ungodly. And, and when Christ died for the ungodly, God forgave us of our sins and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. So, so, so how, how, Pastor Witcher, does the enemy try to undermine what God has put in place? I, I'll tell you how. He, 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 he uses suffering such as tribulation. He, he uses tough times and he uses trials. He, he uses folk talking about you and scandalizing your name. He, he uses distress. He, he gets you all upset about stuff that might not even happen but you think that it might happen because you, you, you fail to put your real trust in God. He uses persecution. He allows folk to walk over you and talk crazy to you and, and, and say stuff to you and do stuff to you that you, that, listen, let's, be, let's just be honest about it. When you were in the world, some of the stuff that, that that's folk are saying and doing to you you would have went upside, oops, upside the head, upside the head. But because you've been saved, you're trying to turn your life around. And so Satan sends persecution. He sends famine. He lets your money get funny. Your change gets strange. He lets your food get low. But you never miss a meal. He uses famine. He uses nakedness. He, what do you mean nakedness, Pastor Witcher? He, he sends disconnect notices to your home and, 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 and you start getting all bent out of shape. You start rubbing your head and, and trying to figure out how you gonna make ends meet when you haven't even been able to make them wave at one another. He uses nakedness. He uses danger. You start looking over your shoulder not wondering, not, want, not knowing who's following you, who's after you, who's behind you. He uses danger but I told us on last week Yay, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, a shadow can't hurt you. A shadow can't harm you. The shadow of a gun can't shoot you. The shadow of a dog can't bite you. He uses danger, but then he tries to use the sword. He tries to send somebody that will try to take you out of here try to kill you, try to remove you from the place that you're in. And Paul says we're killed all the day long as sheep for the slaughter. The enemy, he couldn't discredit you, so he tries to destroy you. I'm not making it up. The Bible says that the enemy, he comes as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour and destroy you. But God is for us. And the number of things John listed in the text is seven. Go back and look at it. Tribulations, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, the sword. That's seven. And, and seven, that, that number, it may symbolically suggest that we're completely tempted or tried by the enemy. But if God is for us, why don't somebody just, just, just type that in? If God is for us, in all things we're more than conquerors through the unbreakable love of Jesus Christ. Yes, we may be separated from family and friends. We may be separated from health and our wealth, but no one and no thing can ever separate us from the love of Jesus which is why we're more than conquerors or super conquerors because the Lord always is making a way. The Lord is always bringing us out over 
and over and over and over and over. I ain't stuck. I'm just trying to give you time to think back about how he's made way, how he's brought you over and over and over again. He keeps on making a way for us. If God is for us, yes, our place in him is unquestionable. If God is for us, the enemy's charges are unjustified. If God is for us, Jesus' love for us is unbreakable. But then lastly, if God is for us, then victory for us is undeniable. Because Paul says, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height or depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Brothers and sisters, thank you for the privilege. But in this last point, Paul expresses the undeniable certainty that our faith in God will stand the test of tempting and the test of time. In other words, none of our enemies, whether natural or supernatural, whether revealed or imagined, and even that you hadn't even thought about, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord because if God if he be for us we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us and I don't know who this message is for and I don't know how you feel about it but I'm thankful for my place in Christ I didn't get here because of anything I've done but because of what God did through his grace and what God did through his love, through Jesus on Calvary's cross when he died to secure my unquestionable place, when he died so that the enemy's charges would be unjustified, when he died to show me his love is unbreakable. But I'm glad that he got up so my victory would be undeniable. He did it for me, but I came to tell somebody that if he did it for me, a rich undone, he's shown up and do it for you. Tell somebody if God is for us, who can be against us? Shake your neighbor's hand and tell them, neighbor, I'm glad that God is for us. I'm glad that he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am 
is on. Tell somebody we have the victory. We don't have to wait until the battle's over. We can shout right now. Is there anybody got a shout down in your spirit? Anybody got a shout down in your belly? I dare you to open your mouth and say, God, I thank you for being for us. You listen here, I'm glad to report he's not just for us in a certain building. He's not just for us around certain people. I'm glad to report today that he's with us on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, Saturday. He's with us just like he is on Sunday morning. He's with us in a pandemic. He's with us in a presidential election. He's with us when our money is funny. He's with us when our friends are few. Ain't that good news? Ain't God all right? If you know he's all right, say yeah. If you know he's all right, say yeah. If you know he's all right, say yeah. 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 I know he's all right. Is there out anybody out there today that know he's all right? I know he's all right because he picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. He did it for me. He can do it for you. Anybody out there wanting to do it, say, Lord, do it for me. Say, Lord, I'm available. Here I am, just as I am, without one plea. But that I'm glad, 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 because I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, I was worn, I was sad. I found in him a resting place. I found in him joy for my sorrow, hope for tomorrow, help for my present condition. I'm glad anybody out there knowing, anybody out there tried it, I'm glad that God is for us even when I let him down even when I did things I didn't have no business doing even then even when I said things I shouldn't have said I thought things I shouldn't have thought but God he's faithful and he's just and God is for us that's good news I'm out of here I'm signing off but can I ask you one quick question won't he won't he won't he won't he pick you up turn you around won't he won't he won't he won't he dry your tears late in the midnight hour I know he did I know he will because God, 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 he's for us, 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 he's for us. He's for us, he's for us, and can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. 
is for us then our place in God is unquestionable God is for us the enemy's charges against us are unjustified God is for us and Jesus' love for us is unbreakable God is for us victory for us is undeniable Nothing and no one can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. If you're tuned in today, you're sitting there, you're saying, Preacher, I needed to hear that word. I was at the end of my rope. I was getting ready to let go. I was getting ready to end it all. I had suicidal thoughts, suicidal plans. But I needed to hear today that God is for us. I want you to know that He's so much for you that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, to die on Calvary for your sins, was buried and got up. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father, awaiting his return because God is for us. And on today, if you want God to be for you, if you want to be in the family of God, if you want to be a, a part adopted into the kingdom of God, all you've got to do is make a decision for Christ. You can come to candidate for baptism, whether physically, virtually, through your Christian experience, by way of letter. Listen, you don't have to be in the building to be saved. You don't have to walk down the aisle to be saved. You can be saved right where you are. Type it in. Email us, 1700canaan at att.net. Call us, 501-374-0485. Let us know that you've made a decision for Christ. Perhaps you... You want to become a member of the Canaan Church? You can call us, type it in on the screen right now, email us, let us know. You want Canaan to be your church home and your church family? We'd love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor. We'd love to be your brother or sister in Christ. All you've got to do is make up in your mind today. Satan doesn't try to make you believe that Jesus does not exist. He does not try to make you believe that Jesus did not die. He does not try to make you believe that Jesus was not buried, that Jesus didn't get up. What he tries to convince you to do is to wait. He whispers in your ear, you've got time. But I want you to know that when you look around our world, you read the news and you see the news on TV and the internet, that should let you know that time is not on your side. You don't have to be sick to die. You don't have to be old to die. Young people are dying. Healthy people are dying. All you have is right now, and right now is quickly fading away. Won't you come? Make Jesus your choice. Make Canaan your church. Or perhaps you're saved, you've been baptized, you have a relationship with Jesus the Christ, but you've backslidden, you're, 
you've walked away from God. Listen, the Bible declares that God is married to the backslider. He will welcome you back home just like he did the prodigal son who went out and lived riotously, spent all that he had. And it wasn't until he, he had hit rock bottom, was in the hog pen of life, that he came to himself and he said, I, I'm going back home. Because back home, even the servants are living better than I am. Today, you can come back home, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you've done. If not now, then when? If not here, then where? If not you, then who? We're waiting on you. Jesus is waiting on you today. Your soul is important. It's precious to him. You are valuable to him. I know others may have told you you, don't, you won't amount to anything. You, you won't be anything. You're just like somebody else, and they weren't anything, and you're not going to be anything. Listen, in Jesus, you can be whatever he wants you to be. All you've got to do is trust him and try him. He's waiting on you today. Mm, there's nothing better than knowing Jesus. He will pick you up and turn your life around. You ought to know him. Get to know him. Right now, today, just come Oh, won't you come on We're waiting on you Come on Jesus is waiting Right now Today Just come Oh, won't you come on Come The blood is still running warm in your veins. Right now, today, just come while there's still breath in your lungs. Right now, today, just come. It's been hours to offer yours to accept or reject. We pray, God, that you have made a decision for Christ, for church, or for change on today. Amen. 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 Certainly we do praise and reverence God in this place on today. Listen, we thank you for tuning in on today. We thank you for, uh, for all of our volunteers, our musicians uh, that come in each and every week to ensure that these broadcasts get out uh, to social media, uh, whatever medium that you are looking at, that you are viewing on. We thank God for our volunteers because they work tirelessly. They are totally committed. And I thank God for each and every one of them uh, for their level of commitment, even in the midst of a pandemic. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, there are announcements that are coming on the screen of these uh, messages and this, these mini this ministry has been a blessing to you. There will be something on the screen as to how you can give uh, via Givelify. Uh, you can mail it in or you can... Uh, simply drop it off here at the church. Our finance ministry will be here from 11 uh, a.m. until noon on today. Certainly, we thank God for all of uh, the Canaanites who uh, have been diligent in your tithe and your offering. Certainly, we thank God for all of our guests uh, that have tuned in from far and near. And we thank you for the seeds that you've sown into this ministry. And we want, we want you to know that we don't take it lightly. We consider it a privilege and an honor that you would decide to sow seed into this ministry, and we believe in being good stewards of that which God has entrusted to our care. There are announcements that are coming on the screen next Saturday, well, this coming Saturday, this coming Saturday at 10 a.m., we are having a, uh, a COVID-19 mental health awareness Zoom call at 10 a.m. We invite 
each and every one of you to, to join us on that. Uh, that will be on the announce on the screens for the announcements. Uh, also, don't forget uh, prayer meeting and Bible study Tuesday evenings at 545 and uh, Sunday school Zoom uh, every Sunday at 9 a.m. All of that information is on the screen. Uh, but if nothing else calls our attention, uh, we thank you for tuning in. Please, ma'am, please, sir, tune in again next week, same time, 1015 a.m. Central Standard Time, 1115 uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, invite someone to join in, to view with you, and we pray that it's being a blessing to you uh, during these days and times in which we're living in. If nothing else calls our attention. We're going to sing our benediction song, and then we're going to go down from this place. As we leave the sanctuary, as we go our separate ways, may God's favor rest upon thee. May he cover you with his grace. Oh, I'll be praying for you. Oh, please be praying for me. May God keep us all in the palm of his hands Till we're together again Together again Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the eyes of seen, ears of heard, hearts have felt. We thank you for your word and your spirit. From every song that was sang, every scripture that was read, even to the feeble, attempt to proclaim your word on today, God, we pray that you have been pleased with our attempt at worshiping you. Now, God, as we prepare to go down from this place, we ask that you would help us to be mindful we never depart from your presence, allow your presence to go with us, lead God, and direct us every step of the way. Then, God, we're praying for our government, we're praying for our country, we're praying for our leaders, we're praying for our world. God, we're praying a special prayer upon the president-elect, God, we pray that you would Give him what he needs, oh God, to do those things which you're calling him to do. God, we're praying for the outgoing president, God. We pray that you would continue to keep him as only you can, God. We pray, Master, that you would bless our young people, our schools, our administrators, those that are on the front lines, and every pastor that stands proclaiming your word, every, every church that stands open in your name. God, we pray that you would continue to lead, God, and direct them, keep them as only you can. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and, and domin glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forever. And all God's children said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next week. <laughs>